Good morning to all. I am Mr. M. Kartikeyan, Assistant Professor of Zoology, Armo Milik Sidhengal College, Tirupati. I am pleased to welcome all of you for the second day of webinar on novel alternative treatment strategy for combating the antibiotic resistance in bacterial pathogens. I am very happy to welcome Dr. R. Srinivasan, Post-Doctoral Researcher, College of Life Sciences, Fujian Agriculture and Forestry University, China, as a resource person to this webinar. I thank him for accepting our invitation. Thank you, sir. I cordially welcome Dr. Brinda Ma'am, Assistant Professor, Department of Animal Health Management, Alagapa University. She took maximum effort for arranging the resource person for this webinar series. I extend a warm welcome to Dr. R. Anandavalli, Head of the Department of Zoology, and Dr. P. Sivakumar, Organizing Secretary of this webinar. I'm glad to welcome the Organizing Committee members, Dr. G. B. Gopinath and Dr. J. R. K. John Paul for this webinar. It's my pleasure to welcome Professor Ananda Krishnan, Head of the Department of Information Technology, who always guide us technically. Most importantly, I welcome professors, research scholars, and student participants for all over the world. Welcome, one and all. Now, the introduction of the speaker. I'm very proud of to introduce our chief guest, Dr. R. Srinivasan, he has made a notable contribution to his field of research. He's an eminent scholar. He is having 10 years of research experience, published more than 25 research papers in peer-reviewed journals with a total impact factor of 60. He is serving as a reviewer in five prestigious journals published by Frontiers Media, Taylor and Francis, Selfless and Springer. He has attended and presented 18 research papers in national and international conferences. He is a life member of Biotech Research Society in India, and he received Best Paper Presentation Award in national conferences. I wish all of you to enjoy this lecture. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now you can carry on your session, sir. Can you start, sir? Ah, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. So, warm welcome to uh, warm welcome to all. Um, here I am going to first of all I would like to express my uh, sincere thanks to the the organizing committee for this uh, wonderful session. Especially I would like to express my thanks to the Mr. M. Karthikeyan, the convener of this session. And uh, uh, okay, R. Anandavalli, Dr. R. Anandavalli, head of the department, and um, J. 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 John Paul, sir. And uh, also, I would like to express my sincere thanks to uh, M. Brinda, ma'am, Assistant Professor, Department of uh, Animal Health Management, Alaga University. So, here I am going to talk about the topic entitled as the novel alternative treatment strategy for competing the antibiotic resistance in bacterial pathogens. So, coming to the introductions, all of very know all of us very know that the bacteria are single cell organisms, which are my, my single cell and microscopic organisms, which exist on the earth for billions of years. This is the time scale show the existence of the bacteria. It showed that the bacteria was existed from 3.5 billion years ago from the present. Further, this the, the existence of bacteria were documented in the all parts of the biosphere from the deep sea to the space. The Andrew Van Leeuwenhoek, father of the microbiology, uh, who, uh, who was the first one to have observed the ba uh, bacteria under his simple microscope. Generally, the bacteria are classified into two types based on the characteristics. First one is the beneficial bacteria, another one is the pathogenic bacteria. So the beneficial bacteria means it can, uh, it can induce the immune system of the hostess. So for example, the probiotics is the best example for the beneficial bacteria. Further, our intestines has the huge number of beneficial bacteria. On the other hand, the pathogenic bacteria. This pathogenic bacteria causes the infectious disease in the humans and the plants. 
Till now, there are different types of the pathogenic bacteria have been reported. Further, this pathogenic bacteria causes infections uh, in humans. For example, the streptococcus biogens causes the throat infections. Further, the Serratia mastocens causes the eye infections, especially the contact lens related infections. More, the hemophilus influenza uh, causes the infections in the uh, brain uh, cover of the brains. This, it is called as the meningitis. The uh, bacteria such as Pseudomonas aeruginosa and the Streptococcus pneumonia causes the pneumonial infections. Further, the uh, Streptococcus mutants and the Enterococcus faecalis causes the infections in the root canal. More, the ETA pathogens such as the Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Proteus mirabilis, and the Serratia mastocens causes the infections in ETA. The Staphylococcus aureus, the gram positive pathogen, causes the infections in skin and wound infections. So, this the diagram shows the top 10 most dangerous pathogenic bacteria among which the Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus mutants, and Klebsiella pneumonia are the prominent pathogenic bacteria against uh, further human infections. So, to counter to battle against infections caused by bacterial pathogens, which antibiotics are blessings to humans, which have protected millions of individuals and prevented the infections. So, the first antibiotics penicillin was discovered from penicillin notatum by Professor Alexander Fleming in 1929. So, the, after the, his discovery in 1929, the penicillin was marketed, uh, introduced into the market in the 1940. So here you can see this is the plate showing the Alexander Fleming is, uh, have done the experiment to discover the antibiotics in which he first he uh, cultured the bacteria in the agar plate. After incubation, he observed that some growth of some growth inhibitions around the contaminated fungus. So he, then he isolated the penicillin uh, compound from this penicillin nutritum. So now like this, the antibiotic discovery has started. So uh, the, now we are going to see about the mode of action of antibiotics. Generally, these antibiotics are inhibits the growth of the bacteria by, uh, by tar targeting different mechanisms. For example, it is some antibiotics inhibiting the cell wall, cell membrane, protein, and the nucleic acid synthesis. The antibiotics such as beta lactams, glycopeptides, and the basitacin inhibit the cell wall synthesis and the other diseases. More, some of the antibiotics such as tetracycline, aminoglycosides, and the macrolides inhibited the. Some of the antibiotic inhibited the protein synthesis. For example, some of the antibiotic inhibited the TS and 50S ribosomal units of the uh, ribosomal units. On the other hand, the antibiotic rifamycin and the ansamycin inhibits the. DNA polymerase uh, dependent RNA polymerase enzymes and uh, RNA synthesis and the actus RNA synthesis inhibitor. More, uh, the uh, antibiotic quinolones inhibitor the, uh, act as the DNA in uh, gyrase inhibitors. Means the DNA gyrase is very important for the DNA confirmations. Uh, apart from this, some of the antibiotics are act, act as the anti uh, anti-metabolites. Means it inhibited the important metabolites for the bacterial growth. For example, the antibiotic sulfon uh, sulfonamides inhibited the Folate synthesis uh, act as the folate synthesis inhibitors. So now we are going to see about the mechanism of antibiotic resistance. Gen uh, generally, the antibiotic resistance in mechanisms are intrinsic and acute resistance. The intrinsic resistance means it are uh, naturally occurring in resistance. For example, the vancomycin resistance in the Escherichia coli. The acute resistance means the, the, the bacteria is yearly it's sensitive to the antibiotics. After that, it develops resistant to the antibiotics. So this is the acute resistance. Uh, generally, the, this mutation was occurred by the mutations. Uh, even though some physical and uh, some biochemical uh, mechanism was already proposed, the four basic biochemical mutations, uh, biochemical antibiotic resistance mechanism are represented here. Here you can see. The first one is the enzymatic inactivation or modification of the antibiotic. The example of this enzymatic inactivation is the beta lactamase enzymes. These beta lactamase enzymes inhibiting, uh, degrade the beta lactam antibiotics. The other one is the decrease the uptake and uh, decrease the uptake of the antibiotic and uh, increase the reflux system. The third one is the bypass pathway. The fourth one is the alter the target gene. 
So apart from this, all these biochemical uh, mechanisms, uh, the, nowadays the biofilm is well documented for the antibiotic resistance mechanisms. So first of all, what is the biofilm? So the biofilm means it is the cell density dependent gene expression system in bacteria. Uh, cell density, uh, biofilm is the aggregation of microorganisms in a self-enclosed exopolychocrate matrix. And these biofilms is, comes under the control of quorum sensing mechanism. Here, uh, so what is the mechanism of antibody resistance in biofilm means? This biofilm uh, cells uh, reduce the antibiotic penetrations and it limits the nutrients and also it reduces the growth of the bacteria. So due to this, this biofilm inside the cells in the biofilms are uh, called as the persistent cells. So it is the dormant state cells. So in the dormant stages, the cells are grow very slow. So it utilizes the low limit, uh, low number, uh, low low level of the nutrition. So it can be able to survive inside the biofilms. Further, this biofilm is covered by the EPS matrix. It means it is the exopolychocrate matrix. This exopolychocrate matrix acts as the barrier for biofilm formations. So the EPS means it's like the mucus layer like that. So the antibodies can unable to penetrate inside the uh, upon uh, 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 inside the biofilm due to this EPS productions. With, you can see here is the uh, timetable for the antibiotic development and antibiotic resistance pattern. Here, the first the antibiotic penicillin was introduced in the 1940s. The resistance was observed in the 1945. Similarly, the antibiotic tetracycline was introduced into the 1950, and uh, the resistance was ob observed 1955. Like that, the erythromycin and methicillin was introduced into the 1950 and 1960. This resistance was observed in the same years. So the uh, further ended in 2014, the World Health Organization has called antibiotic resistance as one of the most important public threats for the 21st century. Uh, further, the, in the developing countries, in the uh, all the medicines easily accessible over the counter. So it is the main reason for the antibiotic resistance. So the indiscriminate usage and appropriate usage of antibiotics pays the way for antibiotic resistance. Further, the battle biofilms. Uh, it's resistant to bacteria, bacteria in the biofilms are resistant to thousandfold to the antibodies compared to the planktonic cells. So the biofilm formations and the antibiotic resistance in bacterial pathogens necessitates for the alternative treatment strategy to overcome the antibiotic resistance in bacterial pathogens. Here I'm going to show about some of the antibiotic resistance. Sorry. Here I am going to show some of the antibiotic resistance in uh, antibiotic alternate antibiotic treatments. Uh, antibiotic treatments. Uh, for example, the most used techniques now nowadays most used therapeutics are the antimicrobial peptides and phage therapy. The antimicrobial peptides means it, it is produced by the many bacteria, fungus, plant, and uh, invertebrates and invertebrates. So these antimicrobial peptides inhibiting the growth of the bacteria and to modulating the immune system. However, these antimicrobial peptides have some uh, drawbacks. For example, it has the drug resistant. Also, it has the cytotoxicity, genotoxicity, and uh, some other uh, side effects. So another therapy is the phage therapy. It is also called as the bacteria phage therapy. In this, the virus can be able to inhibit the growth of the bacteria. It is harmless to the uh, humans. So it is also called as the bacteria eater. However, this phage therapy also has some drawback. For example, it has the drug resistant and the bacteria, uh, the bacterial community have some immune, uh, immune system. It can be able to inhibit the growth of the phages. So only some of the phages overcome this immune system of the bacteria. So there is the urgent need to, uh, to develop the alternative, novel alternative treatment strategy. Therefore, the researchers are continuously searching for novel alternative, alternative treatment strategy without any uh, drawbacks. So one such attractive alternate approach is the inhibition of quorum sensing mechanisms in bacterial pathogens. I know yesterday, uh, Dr. Rajamunian has discussed about the quorum sensing in, uh, in his webinar. But here I'm going to discuss more about the quorum sensing mechanisms and the role of the quorum sensing in the pathogenesis of some bacterial pathogens. After that, I'm going to show about what are the QS compounds reported for the anti-quorum sensing property against various bacterial pathogens. So first of, first of all, what is the quorum sensing means? It is the cell density dependent gene expression system in bacteria. Gene expression system in bacteria. It is mediated by small diffusible signal molecules called r disorders. In gram-negative bacteria, these r 2 molecules are called acyl homocyanolactones. In gram-positive, they are called pheromones. 
further this is the general mechanism for the qs mechanism in gram negative bacteria here you can see this is the signal molecule this is the, for, for example it is like that the acyl homoethylene lactone in the gram negative bacteria the signal molecule synthesized by the bacteria and it diffuses from each cells and go on to bind with, with the receptor proteins this receptor proteins is this receptor protein synthesized by the receptor uh, related gene molecule gene then the synthesis uh, AHL molecules go on to bind with the receptor uh, protein and this receptor protein signal molecule complex go on to bind with the promoter region and triggers the virulent genes expression. Excuse me, uh, excuse me, uh, Dr. Sinu, uh, this is Dr. Gopinath. Uh, could yes, you please, sir. Uh, um, uh, uh, you are, you are, you are in a very fast, um, uh, speaking in a very fast mode and some, some of the participants are not able to follow in such a speed. So, Kindly make it slow. Or oh, do you want to? Yeah. Slow. Okay. 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 So your slow. percentage is okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay so sure. You, sure. Thank you. Thank okay. You. I understood. Okay. 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 Mm, so here I am going to uh, show here I am here I am going to discuss about the general mechanism in your system. For example, at the low cell density, the bacteria produce the only low number of signal molecules. Here you can see this is the signal molecules. This bacteria produce the low signal molecules in the low cell density. When bacteria grow, this bacteria also increases the level of auto antisars productions. So when increasing the auto antisars, after that it will reach the threshold concentration. The threshold concentration means it achieving the high density. So in the high cell density, the bacteria produces large number of large number of auto antisars molecules. Uh, here you can see. So uh, when in, it increasing the high density, the uh, artificial molecules go on to bind with the receptor proteins and it triggers the bioluminescence productions. So what is the bioluminescence? The bioluminescence means it is the like a fluorescent. It is produced by the Pibria fishery and Pibria harvae. These are the aquatic pathogens. These both pathogens in, uh, control this bioluminescence productions under the control of quorum sensing mechanism. So here we are going to see about the already have mentioned about the QS is regulated by the artificial molecules. For example, in gram positive bacteria, it is uh, regulated by pheromones. These artificial are called are, are called pheromones. This is the diagram of pheromones. Here you can see this is the gram negative uh, regulated uh, QS regulated molecules called acyl homocyanal lactones. Acyl homocyanal lactones. The Acyl homocyanal lactones has the two parts. One is the lactone ring. Another another one is the acyl side chain. So here you can see the uh, further the different types of the pathogens has the different uh, various type different uh, different type viral several types of the AHL molecules. These AHL molecules differ from uh, each other. For example, it is differ based on the side chain. Based on the side chain. You can see, sir. Based on the side chain. Here you can see the. So, for example, in the side chain, 11, 11 uh, acyl side chain means 11 carbon atom means it is a C, uh, C11 like that. If it is C10, uh, three, uh, C10 10 side chain means it is a 3 axo C10 HSL. The 14 side chain means it is a 3 axo C14 HSL. This 3 axo means the presence of the oxygen group at the third, uh, third uh, pattern, third position of the acyl side chain. Further, the quorum sensing was first discovered by the uh, Goni Basler, she is the pioneer of quorum sensing. She has discovered this quorum sensing in 1983 in the Vibrio fishery bacteria. Initially, she has started the quorum sensing study. Uh, initially, she has studied the Pendrobacteriaceae. It causes the wide range of infections and secretes the various virulence factors. For example, the Celestia mass sensor regulates the proteogeosin pigment production. Here you can see this is the proteogeosin. It is a pinkish pigment. It is produced by Celestia mass sensor under the control of quorum sensing mechanisms. So we can also this, use this Celestia mass sensor for the QS inhibition studies for screening purposes. Like the chromobacterium bilesium, the, we can use this uh, Celestia mass sensor uh, proteogeosin pigment productions for short of the compound. This, uh, this table represents the QS system and the different types of AHL are produced by Celestia mass sensor. And this is the QS system in Celestia mass sensor. So we have seen about some of the QS system in gram negative bacteria. Here, here I'm going to talk about the QS system in gram positive, the Staphylococcus aureus. The Staphylococcus, we all know that the Staphylococcus aureus is the most prominent bacterial pathogen. It causes the infections in the vital part of the human body. For example, it causes the infections in heart, skin, intestines, lungs, and the bone marrow. 
This is the cure system in uh, Staphylococcus aureus. The AGARD gene synthesized the uh, R2DSR peptides. This R2DSR peptides, this is the immature R2DSR peptides, and the AGRB act as the um, inner peptidase. It transfer the immature uh, R2DSR uh, peptides into the outside of the cell. Also, it convert the immature R2DSR peptides into the mature R2DSR peptides. Then, these R2DSR peptides go on to bind with the AGRC and the AGA, AGRA uh, two component system. And this AGRC and the AGRA two component system de uh, phosphorated the, the AGRA. Uh, and then bind with the P2 and the P3 promoter and it triggers the various virulence factors in uh, Staphylococcus aureus. For the like, most important virulence of Staphylococcus aureus is the biophilic formation. Apart from it synthesizes some of the virulence enzymes uh, under the control of quorum sensing. So since from the discovery of quorum sensing, accumulating evidences clearly can show the connection between the quorum sensing and the wide range of biological functions, especially the biophilic formations. Therefore, the inhibiting this QS system would be the novel alternate treatment strategy. So this QS inhibition was achieved by the inhibition of signal molecule synthesis or QS mechanism, signal molecule synthesis. So the inhibiting this QS system are called as the anti quorum sensing agents or quorum sensing inhibitors. Here I am going to discuss here i'm going to talk about the, the, the way of the quorum sensing inhibitions in bacterial pathogens generally three mechanisms have been proposed earlier for example the first mechanism is inhibiting the uh, ah synthesis means first of all it will not allow to synthesis the ahl molecules the second mechanism is the ahl inactivation here the ahl synthesis ahl was uh, de uh, degraded the third one is the interfering with the signal receptor means it inter interfere the signal molecule uh, interfere the signal molecule to uh, bind with the receptor proteins so mostly the third stage is uh, the, the th most of the deported anticuous compounds are comes under these th third stages means some of the anticuous compounds previously reported it's mimic the structure of the ahl molecules so this AHL, instead of binding of these AHL molecules, similar structure of the, our uh, anticuous compounds go and bind with the receptor proteins. So due to this, uh, 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 this complex, it go and bind with the promoter region. It will not go and bind with the promoter region and triggers the villain gene expression. The another type is the, we already we have, uh, men, I have mentioned about the AHL inactivation. So here, most of the AHL inactivation was uh, done by the uh, different AHL actinides, uh, enzyme, integrating enzymes. For example, the AHL, Lactanases. This AHL lactanases enzymes degrade the AHL molecules, especially it degrade the lactone ring. Further, the AHL acylase it uh, degrade the AHL molecules by uh, breaking the amine linkage from the acyl side chain. So now I have discussed about the QS mechanisms and the role of quorum sensing uh, in Serratia mass like the some of the other bacteria, gram positive and gram negative bacterial pathogens. So apart from this, till now the, there are numerous anti quorum sensing uh, compounds and anti quorum sensing enzymes have been documented. Here I am going to show about our previous research on the publication and the identification of novel anti case agents from various natural resources. So the human depends on plants as a source of medicine dates back to ancient time. Even now, three fourths of the world population. Even now, three fourths of the world population primarily rely on plant and plant extracts for their health care. So, therefore, the plant is the novel target for the identification of the anti quorum sensing agents. So, we have selected some of the plants, for example, piperpetal ethyl estate extract and the vitivirus is next for the anti quorum sensing for assessing the anti quorum sensing activity. So, we have published our paper in the Journal of Ethnopharmacology. This is the Piper Petal. This uh, uh, another work we have published the anti quorum sensing potential of Piper Petal in the Microbial Pathogenesis Journal. Here I am going to see, uh, show about the summary of these results. Uh, the Piper Petal was extracted with the successive solvent extract from non polar to polar solvent. And then uh, here you can see we have used different types of the solvent system from petroleum, non polar to petroleum with the dichloromethane. Chloroform ethyl estate Com compared to the control, the ethyl estate extract of uh, Piper Petal showed a effective biolysin pigment in uh, protegeasin pigment inhibition. So, already I have mentioned about that uh, the inhibition of protegeasin are considered as the anti quorum sensing agents. 
So the, we have selected this ethyl, particular ethyl to extract concentration for further studies. Similarly, this ethyl to extract inhibited the bioluminescence productions. So we have then we have assessed the effect of the ethyl to extract and other virulence factors production in cerium assessments and the RVE. This bipyrimidyl ethyl to extract inhibited the protogeos in lipase and biofilm formation. Further, the antibiofilm potential was confirmed through the light microscopic and the CLSM analysis. Here you can see the untreated control state showed the high surface coverage of biofilm formation, whereas the treatment showed disintegration of biofilm. Then we have assessed the effect of uh, BPE on the motility of the serratia masses. Already I have mentioned that the uh, bacterial cells are motile, uh, motile, used used the two different of the motility. One is the pleasure emitted swimming and swimming motility. It is used to do at, uh, move, move bacterial movement. So this is very important for the biofilm formations. So compared to the antitrial control, our bipyrimidyl extract inhibited the motility along with the proteogeosine inhibition. Here you can see this is the pinkish in color mostly. So here you can see the white uh, circle around the uh, dot. So this is the inhibition of uh, motility inhibitions and along with the protogeosine vehicle productions. Then we have isolated the compound name Pytol from the bicarbonate ethyl ester extract, then assessed the effect of um, to further to validate the outcome of the in vitro results by the real-time PCR analysis, gene expression studies. Here you can see we have used the different types of the genes such as FIMA, FIMC, FLHD, BSME and BSMB genes. This FIMA, FIMC and FLHD genes are responsible for the motility and the BSMB and the BSMB genes is responsible for the protease and biofilm productions. So upon treatment with the bipyrimidyl ethyl acid extract, all, the, all of these genes were downregulated. In another studies, we have assessed the antibiofilm activity of vetiveras is nice root extract against uh, against Staphylococcus aureus. Here you can see uh, we have assessed the antibiofilm activity of vitivirus isonides root extract. The, uh, compared to the control, the vitivirus isonide extract inhibited the biofilm formation. It was confirmed through the confocal laser scanning microscopic analysis. Further, the vitivirus isonides uh, reduced the hemolysis productions. And it, uh, further, the same analysis also varied the outcome of a CLSM analysis. Here you can see the structure, uh, structure of the Staphylococcus aureus, aggregation of microorganisms, whereas the treatment showed reduced level of biofilm formation. So apart from uh, some of the uh, plant extracts, we have used some pure compounds, vital compounds, for assessing their anti-biofilm and anti quorum sensing activity. So uh, we have tested the anti-biofilm efficacy of geraniol against Staphylococcus epidermitis. This is gram-positive bacterial pathogens, another gram-positive bacterial pathogens. Here you can see this is a slime uh, inhibition. So the slime is very important for the biofilm formation. Compared to the control, the geraniol treatment inhibited the uh, slime productions. And further, the anti-biofilm efficacy was confirmed through the microscopic analysis, like microscopic, light microscopic CLSM and SM analysis. This is the hydromath assay. The math means microbial addition to hydrocarbons assay. This um, hydrocarbons is very important for the biofilm formations for initial adherence. So we have assessed the effect of the geraniol on the hydrocarbons productions compared to the untreated control. The treatment showed the uh, reduced level of math production. In another compound, we have assessed the effect of the anti quorum sensing effect of the petrosonic acid against serratia mastocens. The petrosonic acid is the fatty acids. Previously, uh, several uh, types of the fatty acids have been reported for their anti quorum sensing activity, uh, but there is no report for the uh, anti gas potential of petrosonic acid, so we have assessed their anti quorum sensing activity. The petrosonic acid inhibited the protease inhibitions in the both the American type culture collection and the clinical isolates. Further, this petrosonic acid inhibited the TUS mediated protease in biofilm and EPS production. They already have mentioned that the EPS means it is the exopolychocrate matrix. This matrix is protected the biofilm cells from the antibiotics. So, when compared to the antitrial control, the um, uh, antitrial control, the, the petrosonic acid treatment uh, inhibited the EPS production. Whether the in vitro results was validated through the real time PCR analysis means gene expression studies uh, compared to the uh, the petrosonic uh, acid treatment uh, down regulated the BSMA, FIMA, FIMC, and FLHD genes. This FLHD is regulated uh, important for the mobility. So, here you can see the ATCC culture um, showed the down regulation of uh, FLHD genes, whereas the clinical isolate showed the upregulation or slightly upregulations. 
So this is the static. Uh, uh, this is the antibiotic potential hydrostatic acid was confirmed through the microscopic analysis. And this is the swimming and the swimming motility effect of the hydrostatic acid and the swimming and the swimming motility inhibitions. Here you can see the hydrostatic acid inhibited the motility in the ATCC American type culture collection strains, whereas it did not inhibited the uh, did not show any significant inhibitions in the swimming and the swimming motility of clinical strains. So now I have discussed about the anticoagulant sensing potential of plant extracts and some phyto compounds. So the mono, if now I am going to talk about them, the combinational therapy. So generally, the combination, the combinational therapy increases the drug efficacy, efficacy of the drugs. Also, it reduces the concentrations and uh, toxicity. So we have assessed the combination of, uh, so we have assessed the antibiotic efficacy of some uh, uh, phyto compounds along with the, some antibiotics, commercial available antibiotics. In this case, we have assessed the antibiotic efficacy of geraniol along with the commercial antibiotics, cefotaxamine against the staphylococcus epidemia, staphylococcus species, both the staphylococcus aureus and the staphylococcus epidemitis. Compared to the uh, alone compounds, the combination showed the significant anti-biofilm activity. Further, the microscopic, semi-microscopic analysis validated the anti-biofilm efficacy of combinations. Here you can see this. Uh, further, we have assessed the anti-adherence potential of anti-adherence potential of these combinations in the Sinaiabrin's elegance model. The C elegance, Sinaiabrin's elegance. It is the novel. Uh, it is the Unique nematode, it is used to do studying the host pathogen interactions and the anti aging properties. So, it is also used. So, due to the transparent nature, we are using the strains for the biofilm inhibition studies. Here, you can see the untreated control. The controls show the high dense, high dense biofilm formations and agriculture and colonization of the cells in the intestine of the nematode. Whereas, the combination treatment showed a decreased level of colonizations. colonizations. Uh, further, the CF accounts assay was also valid the same. In another studies, we assessed the combination effect of PITAL uh, with the, the cefotaxamine antibiotic for the anti-biofilm inhibition activity for the biofilm inhibitory activity against acetobacter bomani strain. So here you can see the compared to the uh, both drug, the PITAL and the cefotaxamine combination alone, the combination of PITAL and cefotaxamine showed the higher level of uh, biofilm inhibitions. Uh, further, the antibiofilm efficacy was validated for light microscopic CLSM and SEM analysis. Uh, then we have assessed the effect of these combinations on the anti accident enzymes such as catalyst enzymes productions. Already I have mentioned about Acinetobacter bomani regulated the anti accident enzymes such as catalyst and super accident dismutase under the control of quantum sensing. We all know that the anti accident enzymes is very important for the um, um, for the bacterial pathogens from the environmental stresses. So uh, when, we, when we target the anti accident enzymes inhibition means, so it also uh, inhibit the uh, growth or uh, control the virulence of the acinetobacter bomani. So compared to the anti control, the treatment showed reduced level of catalyst productions. More the, for, after that, we have assessed the, uh, we have validated the outcome of inuit research to the gene expression studies. Here you can see the BFMR, BAP, CSUAB, OMPA, PGA, PGC. These genes are very important for the biofilm formation of Acinetobacter bomani, and the CATE genes is important for the catalyst productions. Upon treatment with the combinations, these genes are very down-regulated. Down -regulated. So I have discussed about the phyto compounds and the plant, uh, plant extracts and their combinations. Now we are going to see about the uh, anti quorum sensing and anti biofilm potential of nanoparticles. So generally, the nanotechnology has risen as the new frontier for the development of novel therapeutic methods. It is a multidisciplinary field, which means it utilized the uh, chemistry, physics, biology, principles of chemistry, physics, and biology. Further, it has several advantages. For example, it passage across the biological barrier and even the definition are ruled out by the science concern. Further, the nanoparticle synthesis uses the harmful chemicals, high energy requirements, and a low material convention. So therefore, the promising need to develop an environmental friendly process for nanoparticle synthesis without using the toxic chemicals. So the biogenic methods employing either plant extracts and microorganisms are the um, novel approaches and suitable alternative to the toxic and uh, toxic chemicals and the physical methods. 
previous several plant based silver nanoparticles have been reported for other anti bacterial and anti cancer activities however the no, no reported was available for the anti quorum sensing activities so we have assessed the anti quorum sensing potential of some plant based synthesis silver nanoparticles against different bacterial pathogen first we have assessed the um, phytosynthesis means we have used the vitivirus vitivirus isonized synthesis silver nanoparticles as anti quorum sensing and anti bacterial agent against ericea mussensis we have uh, synthesized the uh, vitivirus silver nanoparticles using the vitivirus isonized root extract after synthesis silver after synthesis of silver nanoparticles the synthesis of silver nanoparticles was characterized through the various microscopic and um, spectroscopic technique then we have assessed their anti quorum sensing efficacy uh, on the inhibition of motility and biofilm formations in another study we have used the pipe pipette like aquas extract for their anti quorum sensing for their uh, nano particle synthesis this uh, and assessed for the and assessed it for the anti quorum sensing and anti biofilm efficacy against europathogens and the europathogens ones here we have used selacia mosses and the botis mirabilis the silver nano particles were synthesized using the pipe pipette like aquas extract and and is in the characterized by various spectroscopic and by microscopic microscopic uh, techniques then we have assessed the anti quorum sensing efficacy by the means of protegeosin ots eps inhibitions uh, here you can see the silver nanoparticle treatment showed high surface coverage of biofilm formation in the control slides whereas the treatment showed disintegration of biofilm in both the sericea mosses and the protein mirabilis strains further it inhibited the swarming motility in sericea mosses and proteus mirabilis then we have assessed the anti adherence potential of silver nanoparticles in the c elegans model system Mm, the silver nanoparticle uh, the pipe pipette based silver nanoparticles enhanced the survival of uh, c elegans compared to the anti tidal control further uh, the anti tidal control microscopic images of c elegans showed the uh, colonization of high surface colonization of uh, bacterial colonization whereas the treatment showed decreased trouble the cfe count as i also varied the same Uh, further, we know that the most of the nanoparticles, silver nanoparticles, have reported for the toxic effect. So, in order to rule out this, we have assessed the cytotoxic effect of silver nanoparticles in, in, uh, through the BBMC assay. And compared to the positive control, here we have used the H two O two hydrogen peroxide as the positive control. Compared to the positive control, the silver nanoparticle did not show any significant cell cytotoxicity effect. Mm, now we have seen about the plant extracts. Mm, phyto compounds and other combinations and the nano particle for the anti quorum sensing and anti biofilm potentials then we have assessed the in vivo protective effect of these compounds on the rat model the rat vista uh, in the rat model the particularly in the vista uh, rat so um, here you can see the in vivo protective effect of geraniol on colonization of staphylococcus epidermidis in rat jugular vein catheter model initially we have induced the enterocarditis infections in the rat model after the infections we have treated the rat with the geraniol uh, after the post day infections the rat were sacrificed and the organs were collected for the histopathology analysis histopathology and estimation of biological markers and the cfe count assay the compared to the untreated control the geraniol treatment showed a reduced level of um, the cfe counts in both the blood and the heart heart tissues for the the histopath uh, the estimation of pathological markers was done we know that the mda um, and uh, nitric acid is very important uh, pathological markers means when it, for example in control if the infection has occurred means it will produce a large number of pathological markers when the not infection has occurred means the tissue will not damage so the marker uh, the marker level will be reduced here you can see the compared to the untreated control the the geraniol treatment showed reduced level of um, uh, both markers uh, biological and pathological markers nitric acid and mda productions in recently in another study we have assessed the productive effect of phytol uh, on the ericea mosses and circuit pyelonephritis infection in vista rats initially we have assessed to the anti quorum sensing and anti biofilm potential through the various microscopic uh, analysis and assessed their uh, anti uh, motility inhibition as uh, effect effect then uh, assessed the in vitro results by the transcriptomic analysis then we have induced the acute pyelonephritis infection in female vista rat 
uh, after the inf uh, infections the rat were treated with the pital uh, pital drug after the post day infections the rat was sacrificed and their organs were collected particularly the kidney and blood was collected for counting the cfe counts and histopathology analysis and to assess the level of pathological markers here you can see compared to the um, infection control the pital treatment showed the decreased level of cfe counts in kidney, bladder and urine samples. Further, compared to the anti control, the, uh, the spital treatment showed reduced level of pathological markers such as MTA, MPO and nitric acid levels. Here you can see, uh, to further validate the outcome of these histopathological markers, we have done the histopathology analysis. Uh, we have taken the two sections, one is the uh, kidney section, another is the bladder section. Here you can see the anti control showed the infiltration of neutrophils. Whereas, uh, in the kidney also, the similar uh, shrinkage of global was observed and infiltration of neutrophils was observed. Whereas the vital treatment showed a similar level of histology section compared to the untreated control. So, I come to the conclusions here. We have assessed the anti quorum sensing potential of some of the plant extracts, spito compounds, and their combinations, and assessed the anti case potential of silver nanoparticles. Up after that, we have assessed the productive effect of all of these uh, natural resources, uh, particularly the Pyto compounds in the for the productive effect in the Vista rats. So, conclusion: the application of the QSA compounds would be the novel alternative treatment strategy for competing the antibiotic resistance in bacterial pathogens. So, I acknowledgement: I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to Professor A. Viraravi, um, my PhD mentor, for his uh, uh, support. Uh, further, I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to Professor S. Kartha Pandian. For uh, for his uh, support in the my in support in my research, further I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to Professor K. Vadamurugan, Dr. M. Ramesh, Dr. K. Pandima Devi, Dr. S. Kavul Shankar for their support during my PhD studies. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to the my senior seniors and juniors of our lab, Dr. Sibya Vasanda Bakiyavedi, Dr. K. Sayyid Mustafa, Dr. E. Anna Purni, Dr. E. R. Kannapan. Dr. K. Rama Devi, Dr. S. Sandha Kumari, Dr. M. Sivarandiri, Dr. R. Ms. R. Durga Devi, and Mr. R. Alex Pandian for the support during my PhD work. Further, I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to the, my postdoc mentor, Professor Ziyang Mindy, for supporting in the form of postdoctoral fellowship. Thank you, God, for your grace and blessings. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pinovathan. Thank, um, thank you very much okay, for your excellent presentation. I think it's the time for uh, the interaction with the participants. Participants okay. can uh, raise the questions in the chat box. Okay. Here it is. Sir, I have a question. Um, but uh, yes, sir. you shared a lot of information about the anti sensing and the anti biofilm activity of various compounds derived from uh, plant resources. But uh, yeah. there are any uh, compounds derived from the animal resources and whether you checked in the. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. For example, not only the plant only reported for the anti -QS. For example, uh, the some of the bacterial isolates, most of the bacteria, some of the bacterial isolates have been reported for their anti quorum sensing activity. For example, in our lab, we also have done some anti -QS potential of some marine bacterial isolates. We have isolated the bacterial isolates from the marine resources where various marine resources such as the algae and the seaweeds like that. So we have isolated the compound from this uh, marine bacterial isolates also and uh, Assist to the activity. Any comments there from any higher animals like uh, um, vertebrates? Oh, are you saying like that? Uh, I think I, I, it is not reported. I think I think it is not. I think and my my knowledge in my knowledge, I think I don't know about it clearly. But it is not reported from my higher animals. Mostly people are using the plant extracts like that, uh, bio compounds, and the, some marine bacterial isolates. Because compared to the plant extracts, plant uh -huh. extracts, the, these bacterial isolates producing the quorum sensing enzymes, quorum sensing inhibiting enzymes. For example, the uh, most of the isolates producing the AH integrating enzymes, like that AH lactonase and acylase enzymes are uh, reported in the bacterial isolates. Okay, okay. 
Thank you, sir. Is there any question from the participants? Participants? Sir? Participants, uh, you can raise your hands in the chat box so that we will unmute you and you can ask the question directly. Oh, participants are allowed to unmute their mic and the video. You can ask the questions directly to the resource person. Some of the participants have requested to share the PPT. Uh, definitely, it will be, uh, I think, the YouTube live program will be the carrier and it will be available in our uh, college website. And we will give you the link through the chat. Through the chat. Ah. Okay, sir. Um, okay. It is time to thank you. Uh, thank okay. you, Dr. Srinivasan, the postdoctoral researcher, College of Life Sciences, Fijian Agriculture and uh, Forestry Research Institute. Yeah. Uh, on behalf of Arthur the Mall College and Department of Zoology, uh, we are grateful to you because we have uh, shared your rich experience uh, with a very good uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation. Um, very particularly about uh, pathogenic bacteria and the mode of action of uh, antibiotics, mechanism of antibiotic resistance, the need for alternative measures of antibiotic treatment and alternative treatment strategies with antimicrobial peptides, uh, foreign sensing mechanism. Of course, yesterday also we had a very good session on yes, foreign yes. sensing mechanism and today you shared uh, further information in that then current sensing signaling molecules um, in various uh, bacterial uh, species and uh, developmental stages in biofilm formation, the impact of biofilm in uh, medicine, then current sensing mechanism in uh, different bacterial pathogens, then the uh, fruits uh, that have uh, the anti current sensing mechanism in, in plants like mango. And we are uh, really happy that the Moringa olipara has that uh, quality um, because it is very commonly available uh, here and people can consume it for uh, anti current sensing activity. And then, current quenching strategy, medicinal plants, and their usages in current sensing potential. So, lots of information you have shared with us. You have uh, also shared anti biofilm activity of various plant species. Then a combinational therapy, phyto compounds of uh, various uh, plants, nanoparticle synthesis, and, uh, and its application in anti corn sensing activity. Then finally, we have also shared the histopathological analysis and the pathological marker. And the, uh, really, it is a rare opportunity uh, uh, to hear such a very good uh, lecture, um, lots of information. Um, within within a, one hour, uh, really it is a wonderful session, sir. Uh, we are very much thankful. Okay, you. thank you, sir. Uh, I submit this as a thanks on behalf of our department and college. I also thank okay, uh, sir. our college secretary and uh, principal for their constant encouragement, and our head of the department, uh, Dr. Anandavali, and Professor uh, Anandavali Krishnan. Head of the Department of Information Technology, who technically coordinated the entire session, and uh, Dr. Binda from Malapa University, the convener of uh, today's webinar, Dr. Kathikeyan, and uh, organizing secretary, Dr. Siva, and my colleague, Dr. Jan Paul. I also uh, thank all the participation uh, participants in India and, and from overseas countries. Uh, sir, uh, good morning, sir. Good the, the gene responsible for the bioluminescence and that is pigmentation in um, uh, Ceresia marcescens. What is the gene name, sir? 
not in the cerisium mass sense the bioluminescence production is no sir pigmentation is under the control of pigmentation. in the pre pre fission and pigmentation yes yes the ah. pigmentation in cerisium mass sense for example uh, the pig p gene is there pig p gene is responsible for the produces in pigment production in cerisium mass sense uh, like that uh, the core gene the lux did you get my point hello ma'am ah, yes sir yes sir i got it mm, yes ma'am the pig p gene the gene name is the pig b it is responsible for the produces in pigment production in cerisium mass sense so another that uh, the important genes for uh, uh, bioluminescence production means it is comes under the past regulator for example the lux uh, lux gene for example in the vibrio harvey if the lux uh, i and uh, p like that it is a master regulator it is responsible for the bioluminescence production okay sir thank you sir okay that was a nice presentation sir thank you sir okay thank you okay thank you thank you ma'am thank you any other question from the part okay sir srinivas uh, okay sir okay sir we can conclude the session conclude the session thank you okay sir yes yes participants okay, you fill the you, feedback form the form will be active up to 1 p 1 pm now we can leave the session meeting hall thank you sir thank you okay thank you sir